Hey guys, it's me Rachel and I am back from BBC East Midlands. Well, I've been back for several hours now. Um, I got home about five o'clock. I should have sorted out my hair before I started recording. Um, so yeah, I got back at five o'clock. My meeting... <clears throat> Sorry, I had apple juice making my throat sticky. Um, I had a meeting at 2 o'clock and uh, the whole thing, I think, took around 40 minutes, 40 minutes-ish, tops. Um, so, I'll explain what happened at the beginning of the day. So, after I left you, I went to have my breakfast and prepared myself to onward for my journey. I needed to be at the train station at approximately 12.58 and my train was almost two minutes late but it got there on time. I was like, ah, oh, thank goodness I don't want to be late. Not on a day like this. So, I got on the train. Hmm. Everything all went smashingly well. It was a approximately seven stops before Nottingham. That was a bit of a annoying but what can you do? So there was one stop, another stop, 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 stop. Every five minutes there was a stop. It was crazy. It's like uh, <laughs> and hardly any people were at the train station there. Ah. It was insane. I'm guessing trains are like cars. If you just keep stopping and starting, you burn more fuel. Or something along those lines. It was insane. Ah, oh, but yes. Well, from that, um, I was lucky to buy my ticket in advance. Because uh, the train conductor guy who hands out all the tickets on the day didn't look at everyone's tickets on the train. For all he could have known, someone could have just jumped on that train and got a free ride. I mean, I could leave this as a rant for another day, but I won't go on to too much detail for this vlog because you probably might go on long enough. <laughs> so yes, I had my ticket out and ready for the train conductor to check and for every stop we stopped at he just disappeared. It's like oh I've got my ticket here I want to check it. And he vanished. And there's me renting again. So I had off-peak tickets so I thought, oh, I, I need to get the half past three train back home because that's the last train before the peak times. So, so <clears throat> I thought we would manage to get everything done within two o'clock so I can just scurry away to the half past three train. Uh, we didn't, and I'll get to that in a minute. So. I got to the train station at half past one and it was completely insane. I got off at platform 4A. Um, my goodness, if you've ever been to Nottingham Station, it's huge! I have not seen a train station that big before. Apart from the London train station, that was like so many years ago. Oh my god! I kind of over exaggerated somewhere and I said it was as big as the country of Israel. Oh my good god. Massive! I mean, it was so big you could have got a, a segue to get from one point to another. Oh dear. <coughs> Excuse me. So I was looking around uh, uh, for my colleague Jack and I was texting him. He said he would wait for me at platform four. 
I was says, I'm at platform 4A, where on earth are you? I was just, I was looking over here, looking over there, looking at the screen, trying to figure out where is platform 4. So I got back to platform 4A and just kept walking down, walking down. Then out from the corner of my eye, I saw Jack. And I was like, oh my god, you're there. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Oh god, I was so lost, I was so confused. Everything looked familiar because I saw it on the TV. So, met up with Jack and we made our way out of the train station. Um, I'm surprised there aren't any ticket barriers. Aren't many train stations have ticket barriers? Well, major train stations. Um. Uh, the train station I got off didn't have a ticket barrier, but that isn't a major train station. Train station Nottingham is a major train station because there's like so many platforms. It's crazy. There's like seven platforms. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and and if it's been a major city and there's loads of things there, do you think there'll be ticket barriers and stuff? But no. It's crazy. <laughs> Um, so I went out and I said to Jack, I really should get um, a single back home. And he said to me, that, why? Don't you have a, a return? I said, yeah, but it's off peak. And he said to me, you don't need, you don't really need it. They don't really check upon it. They just look at it as a normal ticket. And I thought, if you put it that way then, okay. So I didn't take too much notice of it because we were kind of running out of time and it was nearly two o'clock because I got there at half past one. Um, again, I'll get back to the off-peak because I've got more to talk about. Um, so uh, we made our way onto London Road. That's where BBC East Midlands is. We got into the building and... At the reception, I asked if Stuart Thomas, the head of BBC East Midlands, was available. And he was on a call, and he'll be with us shortly. Uh, we had to sign our, the visitor book, so put my name, the institution, and the date. And we got a little ticket thing that sat around his shirt, or whatever. Had our names, and it said visitor as well. I wish I could have brought it home, it was really nice. It was a nice little souvenir. Um, if you may have noticed, I've changed my profile picture on my channel. Uh, not sure if you can enlarge it, but if you go to my Facebook, you can see the picture in full. It's a picture of me and Jack sitting on a, the studio sofa. You can just see the little name tag thing hanging from my shirt and that's what I wanted to show you but I had to bring it back uh, <laughs> it was, I thought it would be a nice little souvenir but I had to take it back it's a shame <laughs> so uh, we were a fraction early for the interview and tour so we sat around waited for a bit and um Caught my eye on the few news reporters. I thought, you, you know, you have that sort of shock when you see someone off the telly and you think to yourself, well, I think to myself, oh my god, they have legs. <laughs> it's kind of crazy to say that, but you know they would have legs because they're a normal, ordinary person. But if you're used to seeing them on the TV all the time, you kind of have that reality check shock thing. Yeah, I got that a couple of times because I saw loads of people come on the TV there walking around. Um, they were all very busy and in my defence, if I was really busy I wouldn't want to be bothered. So I don't want to bother anybody because I know they have things that have a 
a time limit and a deadline, probably based on the day, and they need and they need as much time as possible to get the project done. So yes. Um, what else? And the battery there. I think I need to go and um, put charger in. Back in a sec. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. Um, so my battery is really low and I had to relocate. I was just standing right there and now I'm sitting on a little table right there with my laptop right next up there. Um, yes, uh, hopefully we don't get cut out too much here. So what was I talking about before I had to move? Uh, talk about the presenters from the TV and not bothering them because they're busy. Um, yeah, so I wouldn't like to be bothered if I'm busy. So I didn't want to talk to them. I thought they might be a bit rude because they would have deadlines to meet during the day. Uh, I saw Quentin Rayner and he had something to um, present um, on the evening half past six bulletin um, and he was and he got his head down so he was into it and I can see what he's been up to busy stuff there uh, so what I was talking about um, I kind of skipped ahead because <laughs> I didn't see Quentin and Natalie who does the sports on some days yet <laughs> um, but um, so we were sitting in the reception area and then after a few minutes of waiting Stuart Thomas appeared from out of nowhere and he raised his hand going Hello, uh, Rachel Sweet, and I was like, hi, it's me, it's me, and I went up, greeted him, gave him a good firm handshake, <laughs> um, it, it, it was a very good firm handshake, um, uh, <laughs> I think it's probably been a bit too strong, I think uh, I shook his hand <laughs> off, um, so I introduced Jack as well. I mean, this is Jack, who I'm working with. Because I was the main one who was contacting contacts about things. Um, a nice chap, nice chap it was. Very lovely. Very lovely in to interview. So he uh, took us to his office. Had to talk about what we're doing, what our plans are. And what's the idea of... Uh, of us interviewing him. Uh, we talked about it being a research file project for research and development. And we need to um, research on a local company they, uh, company that we wanted to work in. And so we both picked BBC. And it was, we were told it was more wise to interview uh, a more local branch rather than the big, big main company out there in wherever it is now. Uh, I went to the BBC in London in 2011. It was really awesome. I think I posted a video of it a couple of months ago, or I think, of my adventures there. It's just some old footage of me with a camera filming everything that's anything as possible. Um, <coughs> I don't know where this cough came from. It's always like a strong tickle in my throat. Sorry. <laughs> Got some apple juice. Oof. That'll help me. Oh. Strong eyes. <laughs> um. <laughs> what was I talking about? Uh, yes, we were talking about a project. Um, 
Then they asked, does he want us to do the interview first, or have the tour? And... That split second, he thought it would be best to do the tour first, so he can generate some questions along the way. We've already got a set of ten questions, by default already, to ask him. And that's what we asked him, because we were too fascinated with what he showed us. Um... um I don't think I can. I can't. I don't know if I should really say anything about what's behind the doors. But apart from it, it was really, really amazing to be there. Just uh, if you can imagine an office with loads of computers, it's, just, it's like that. Basically, I'm not giving too much details, apart from one or two cameras in places. Um, where else did we go? Plenty of edit suites. We went to the main studio, which is my profile picture somewhere. Uh, if you want to see it in full, it would be a good idea to go to my Facebook page. Um, the link will be in the description below, as always. Um, oh my, what else? So I went to the studio. And it was really, really small. <laughs> um, it was a lot smaller than actually expected because it looked huge on the TV. But when you see it in person, it's tiny, 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 tiny. Um, you have the sports section here and the main area where the main presenters are. And they really do a lot of mirror trickery to make the set bigger. They have one mirror here, then the sofa here, and then another mirror there. Was, wow! <laughs> All of the bigness up till now was a lie. <laughs> really awesome. So we left the studio, main studio. Um, there's a couple of small other studios as well. Yeah, it's, it's completely full of studios and TV cameras and computers and everything. Really enjoyable experience. I really loved going there. Um, <laughs> so we went back to his office. Uh, we prepared ourselves for the interview. Uh, I was asking him the questions and Jack was recording and keeping an eye on the Morantz if it was still working. Uh, again, we had a total of 10 questions to ask him. The first set were mine and the second set was his. Um, I did mine in advance because I wanted to get it done and I'm pretty slow with coming up questions and I didn't want to ask questions that were stupid or anything and if you can remember from a previous vlog I was come talking about how difficult it was to come up with a set of questions to ask but I managed in the end, I managed and most of them were pretty good questions from what he said that's pretty chuffed <laughs> Um, golly. Uh, so the interview went well. Uh, we took a picture of him for our research file. Uh, da, 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 da. So at the end of that, he was about 20 to 3, I think. Uh, he gave us his business card and he said to us, if there's anything else, do get in contact and always stay in contact and I thought we will, I will, I will and it was pretty awesome I just thought it would just show us out, that's it but it helped us, that was really really awesome and no doubtably at some point we'll probably may get in contact back with him, I don't know um, we do 
have another interview planned of someone who used to work for BBC East Midlands. His name's Andrew David. He now works at the local radio in Lincoln. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Siren FM. Been there. Awesome. I love it. Uh, you can't miss it. It's stuck in the media building. <laughs> uh, ooh, whoa, whoa, whoa. So we finished there. Uh, what else? We went to Starbucks. It's quite a bit of a walk away. Well, when I say walk away, it was like bang next door to the train station. And Jack said, oh, it's just a bit over there. And I said, where? It is just a bit over there. But I can't see it. So we kept walking, kept walking, kept walking. And then just turned around. It was an odd looking pub place. I didn't really want it anything because I was fine. But you got yourself some hot beverage of some sort. Um, the main plan was to get all of the audio files onto my laptop. Well, we had one audio file, that was the interview. Um, to get the audio files on the computer. I keep making it pure. <laughs> Um, but we didn't have much look with it. Um, uh, the driver wouldn't inst install. The USB was undetectable. I couldn't read it at all. It was, it was really starting to annoy us both that why couldn't my little laptop detect the Morans? But he said that the Morantz does have several problems from time to time. And that's why I don't like using them. I always like to use some sort of other forms of uh, recording equipment. I like using my phone to record stuff. I, yeah, I like using small recorders to record stuff. Um, but Morantzes, I just don't like them. I just don't like them at all. I hate them with a complete utter passion. I just don't like Morantzes. And that could be another rent video for another day. But yes. Uh, so, he took it home. Well, I think he took it back to Lincoln to get it sorted out. These adventures to go back and forth, back and forth. Oof. <laughs> um, so he sorted it out. Thank goodness. Um... Yeah, I went to get the quarter past four train. Uh, I got there a bit early. <laughs> uh, I kind of waited about 20 minutes for the train to actually get to the station. Um, <laughs> glad I had enough time to find this, the platform. Again, it was a huge place. It's crazy. Uh, I need to go on platform 1B. And I was at the other end of the train station. Uh, crazy. Oh, God. There's so much paintwork happening. Uh, Nottingham train station has been going under a lot of work over the last few months or the past year. Surprised things are still going on. I would have thought we'd be finished by now. <laughs> Uh, so, waited 20 minutes for the train to arrive, and it appeared. I had to get the Sleaford via Lincoln train to get home. And at that time, I still had a off-peak ticket. Now, Jack said, I won't have a problem. He was right. <laughs> I didn't have a problem at all. I was there, sitting on the train, took it out. Like it was an ordinary ticket. And the uh, chap came by, asked for my ticket. I showed him I showed my ticket to him and he said, Ah, oh, lovely, lovely. And he just waltzed back to another person. And he just looked at it like it was an ordinary ticket and I thought and I thought, Wow 
He was right. Jack was right. Wow. And there's me thinking I wouldn't need to go buy a, a single ticket. <laughs> well. <laughs> it's always good to keep spare money on you just in case anything like that happens, but... <laughs> money not wasted. <laughs> Adventurous. So... Uh, there's a couple of stops again before I got to my home station. Not as much this time, thank goodness. I was absolutely tired. <laughs> uh, I could have just fallen asleep on the train then and now. Um, yeah, could have. <laughs> uh, my back was aching because I didn't move for so much. Um, uh, I do have kind of a back issue. Sometimes I get major cramps in the top part of my back. Cause, I, Cause I'm always like, no, I'm not hunched over, just straight up, and my spine just bends out. And it gets all cramped and stuck for so long. I normally do a lot of sitting and computer work. I think that could be my problem. I normally bend backwards to um, relieve the pain and to get it flexing again. Sometimes I rotate my shoulders or stretch like that, just get it pumped back out. I didn't do it too much because I did a major stretch earlier. <laughs> oh, <it's better. laughs> Sometimes I have like a shoulder blade problem here. Sometimes I just like it back or get my head and do it like that. Uh, yes, terrible back problems then. <laughs> I wish there was enough room and uh, <laughs> less embarrassment for me to just move my back and just do what I normally do. I'm just like a bag of broken peanuts. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so a couple of stops. Almost fell asleep. And thank goodness I managed to get home to my home station. And you never guess what. My trousers almost slipped down. And it started to rain a little bit. So I went underneath the little shelter to get some shelter. <laughs> and to pull up my trousers. So I pulled up my trousers then made my way home. Uh, I got home about, well, my train. Got back to my home station about 4.35 or something. And it normally takes me 20 minutes to get from the station that's on the outskirts of town. Uh, 20 minutes. So... I got back about quarter past five. I wished the station that was more close to me, which is ten minutes away, uh, had more Nottingham, well, had a Nottingham um, route. So it always has loads of Lincoln routes. There's plenty of Lincoln routes. Lincoln is so close. And Nottingham is so close. I am smack bang in the middle of two major cities. And uh, <laughs> I just wish the station up that way, where I normally go on, has a Nottingham station. So there's always a ticket stall right there. And I played with a ticket machine that was at the, st at the not main station. I'm going to say not main station because it's not a main station. And I was confused. I mean, it was not really responsive, I just kept slamming my finger on the screen. I had to use my phone at some point. I went boom. <laughs> Took a while. Uh, so I think that's my adventure for today. Mm, yeah, I had a really awesome day today. Um, 
<laughs> I had to get changed when I got back because I was completely sweaty with sweat and BBC. <laughs> yeah, it's totally worth it. Totally worth it. Got a lot of. I got a few photos and uh, notes. Uh -oh. Good for our project. I've got hiccups now. Mm. Sorry. <laughs> I think I've been talking too much and reminiscing. So, notes, audio file. Yeah, they're both audio files. And photos of our adventure. Um, Need to do another interview next week. Well, we need to arrange it. I don't know when. Oh dear, got a scab on my leg, I think. I don't know. Feel scabby. What else? What else? What else? I'm surprised my camera has been running this long. Because last time when I had my camera connected to the mains, it just kept turning it off every 20 seconds. But again, I think that was the. Uh, the mains itself I was messing up. This one's pretty alright. <laughs> yeah. I must say, I think this has gone on long enough now. Uh, but yeah, that was my adventure and I want to keep this together nicely and save it for the future. Because one day, one day I'll look back on this and think, well, my first adventure to BBC Midlands and I had a really fun day. Mm. Five five years from now. Uh, yes. I was going to plan on making a time capsule video asking questions to myself in five years. And in five years time I can look back at, it, back at it and think did I accomplish those things that my past self did and asked. Yeah, be something to look forward to and probably look back on. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, five years, when's five years? 2019. 2019, I'll be 27. <laughs> <laughs> so. 2019 questions to my 27 year old self. 27, oh my god. <laughs> Hopefully, I've done a quite a few adventures then when I'm 27. Okay, mm -hmm. yes. I think I will love you and leave you and see you in another vlog. Bye-bye, guys. Love you all. Wow.